In this problem, we're trying to verify the divergence theorem for the situation right here. So remind ourselves what the divergence theorem is. Divergence theorem tells us that the flux through a closed surface is equal to the volume integral of the divergence throughout that uh, throughout the space enclosed by the closed surface. So let us try to evaluate the, the flux first. So for the force field, we're given it's equal to r squared r hat. So r hat is a vector that points in the direction uh, that is perpendicular, that is uh, equal to the radial direction. And dA here, so you see that dA is also a vector, you see that dot product here. And dA is going to point in a direction that is perpendicular to the surface. And the surface that we're considering is a spherical shell with radius r. And then for a, ra uh, for a spherical shell, uh, the vector that is always perpendicular to the surface is actually the uh, r hat itself. So you know that if you go from the center and then you point outwards, this direction that is essentially the radial direction is going to be perpendicular to the surface of the sphere. So dA, we know that the direction of dA is going to be r hat. So we know that dA is going to have a component that's r hat. And this is going to be the vector sort of like component of dA. So this tells us the direction that dA is pointing to. So the magnitude of dA is going to be r squared sine theta d theta d phi. So these, these numbers here are just uh, scaling factors so that by the end after we integrate this surface uh, integral the dA is going to add up to the entire surface area of the sphere. So you can prove this expression uh, rigorously uh, using a, a cross product so I'm not going to, I could show you at the end of this video but for those of you who just want to get to the answer uh, you're, you're going to have to use this for dA so I'm just going to move on for, for the time being. So I'll show you how to derive this uh, rigorously at the end of this video for those of you who are interested. So now with all this information we can essentially turn this uh, surface integral into something that we can actually evaluate. So you see that there's a dot product and the, the two r hats after they dot each other that's just going to be equal to one. And uh, on the surface of this sphere the force field is going to be equal to r squared. So before the small r was a variable now we're putting in a constant the radius of the spherical shell. So multiply these together, you get r to the power of 4 sine theta d theta d phi. And the theta uh, ranges from 0 to pi, phi ranges from 0 to 2 pi, so that essentially draws out the entire sphere. So there are no phi terms inside, so integrating that's just 2 pi. And then integrating sine theta from 0 to pi, so you just get 2, so let me show you. So cosine pi is equal to negative 1, so you get 1. And then you minus negative 1, because uh, cosine 0 is 1, so you have a negative here, so you get negative 1. So in the end, you get 4 pi r to the power of 4. So this is the amount of flux that's going through the surface. Now let's try to evaluate this expression here. So first of all, of course, we need to find the divergence. And in our case, again, v is equal to r squared r hat. And we're going to apply the divergence formula for spherical coordinates. And uh, seeing that there, is, there are only uh, there are r components in this vector field, we only need to concern ourselves with the with the section in the formula that relates to the r component. So there are other components uh, for the theta and phi component, but those would just be equal to zero for our situation here because we just have uh, a component in the r direction. So this is all we have to concern ourselves with. So v r is the uh, is the function here. Uh, that is in the radial direction. So we just substitute r squared here, so we get r to the power of 4. So 4r to the power of 3 to the power of r squared, so we get 4r. So now let's try to evaluate the, the volume integral. So we get 4r, and then as always in spherical coordinates, the dv is equal to r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. So the r ranges from 0 to big R. Uh, theta goes from 0 to pi, phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm just going to pull up the 4 first. So there are no phi terms, so I can just integrate out the phi. And then once again, we have an uh, integral from 0 to pi for sine theta, d theta. And as we've shown before, that's just equal to 2. So we have r to the power of 3 and uh, dr. So that becomes r to the power of 4 divided by 4, 0 to r. So these cancel out. So see that uh, these two they multiply together it give you 4 pi r to the power of 4. So see that this is exactly equal to 
what we had before. So we've essentially verified the diverted state 